to one and all. My name is Dr. Taufik Bora. I am a consultant, oral and maxillofacial surgeon. I practice at SL Raheja Hospital. And uh, I have special interest in TMJ disorders and orofacial pain. I have done my training in temporomandibular joint arthroscopy and total joint replacement. I am still being trained at uh, University of Maryland, TMJ Mini Residency. I have a certification in orofacial pain and pain management from British Pain Society. I would like to today spread some light over TMJ disorders and how are they to be treat, treated. This is going to be a very uh, brief and an overall uh, overlook kind of a session for temporomandibular joint disorders. We will not be going in very uh, detailed specifics. This is more, more, more of targeted for the general population. So, uh, temporomandibular joint is the joint present in the face. Uh, it is the only joint present in the face on which you open your mouth, you carry on your daily functions of eating, speaking, etc. Any problem with this joint can lead to difficulty in chewing, it may lead to pain in this area, it may also lead to headaches in the facial region. Uh, the first symptom if of temporomandibular joint disorders technically is uh, the patient feels that it's a ear ache. So normally what happens is the patients with TMJ disorders will most often land up at a dental clinic or an ENT clinic. Uh, that's because the pain is perceived as if it's happening in the ear. Normally the ENT checks the ear and gives you a clean check for the ear and that's when you get uh, your attention focused on the temporomandibular joint. As every other joint in the body, TMJ joint also has uh, two bones functioning along with a disc in between. This disc also called as meniscus in the field of orthopedics. Uh, meniscus plays a role of separating the joint and allowing the function to happen smoothly. It does not allow to the, the two bones to meet as well as it helps in the smooth translation of the joint. So temporomandibular joint unlike other joints is a very complex joint. What, what happens is when the TMJ is functioning it not only acts as a hinge but it also has translatory movements. That means while chewing, the, the condyle rotates in the socket and that what, that's what makes the joint a really uh, complicated one to manage. Uh, there's a lot of biomechanics which is going on in the joint. Temporomandibular joint disorders is more prevalent in females, the ratio being 8 is to 1. 8 females is to 1 male. Uh, this is what we have seen over the years of practice in DMJ disorders. The anatomy of the joint pretty much is uh, the way your mouth opens. There, there is a set of muscles involved in it. So there are there is a few set of muscles that are involved in opening the joint and there is a particular set of muscles involved in closing of the joints. To put it in a simple manner, disorders of the TMJ joint can be put as extrinsic problems as well as intrinsic. When I say intrinsic, it means inside the joint. The internal rearrangement is the most common diagnosis. Internal rearrangement means a problem where the joint disc, the meniscus of the joint is displaced from its position. When this happens, it leads to adaptation. Now what do I mean by adaptation? Adaptation means your joint will try to adapt to the new disc position. But in that process, it may lead to discomfort, pain as well as mechanical obstruction in opening your mouth as well as chewing. The signs and symptoms for TMJ disorders would be first having clicking and popping sounds in your joint. The patient may experience clicking occasionally, sometimes at mouth opening, sometimes at closing the mouth or both. Post that there will be pain while opening your mouth, uh, there will be discomfort in chewing. All these are signs where you need to consult your TMJ specialist, dentist, whoever is uh, readily reachable at that point of time. So, next, coming to the next point, when something like this happens, what is the first thing a patient should do? Whenever you experience this kind of a pain, which is abrupt, for example, giving you an example, uh, you were at a social function last night, you happened to eat something very hard and now suddenly your mouth opening has reduced, you cannot open your mouth and it is painful. At such point of time, you should immediately come to soft diet. You should start eating soft diet 
that means something like dal khichdi in the indian cuisines dal khichdi khichdi type of consistency you should uh, start using ice packs basically ice packs and hot fermentation basically hot packs and ice packs there is uh, there is slight confusion between both so what happens is uh, when it is an immediate injury for for example if this has never happened to you before this is happening for the first time you can resort to ice packs but that by that i mean is cold fermentation because it's an immediate injury something happened and it's ca- caused damage in your body but for patients who are, who are having this on and off and are aware that they are suffering from some kind of problem like this you should try and do warm fermentation hot fermentation on both your sides of the joint that will increase the blood supply to that area and in return provide relief to your pain obviously it goes without saying that you will have to take a few medications that includes nsaids which are uh, anti inflammatory medications as well as muscle relaxants to control your pain you should immediately get in touch with your dentist or a tmd specialist if known to you and uh, get them uh, to look at you mouth opening should be reduced you should restrict your mouth opening you should when when you are yawning by restricting mouth opening is that when you are yawning you should yawn in a controlled fashion you should support your jaw soft diet as i said also when you talk to your dentist your dentist may suggest dental splints or orthotics basically these are load sharing devices what happens is when such an incident has recently occurred you may uh, have put inevitably more load on your joint so that asserts the use of a dental splint or an orthotic when you wear that you basically share your load on the joint you uh, don't allow your teeth to meet and that helps for your joint that that buys time for your joint to uh, recuperate and heal that's precisely what you want at that point of time now coming to the next point uh, which is a little more uh, in detail that's uh, the inner joint problems when something is happening regularly and now has led to some irreversible changes in your joint for for example there is a disc displacement first things first what do you do and how do you understand that this is happening so technically speaking if you are suffering from clicking popping sounds for more than 6 months if you i, I would also like to put uh, some light on the point that if you are suffering from clicking and popping sound and one fine day you get up and the clicking and popping is gone that doesn't mean that you have resolved your problem that mean that means that you may have progressed to the further stage because of the fact that clicking and popping sound occurs when your disc pops back in position but when that is not happening you are not hearing that sound but that necess- does not necessarily mean that you have healed that means that you may have progressed to the next stage of the injury disorders so yes do not take clicking and popping sounds very lightly mm, the moment you start feeling pain along with clicking and popping you should visit your doctor if you are having clicking and popping more than 6 months or more than 3 months you should visit your doctor and get it checked when this is happening now when this is happening for more than 6 months and now you have decided that you want to do something about it i would like to put it across that with respect to a joint an mri scan is the best scan available which you can do at least as of now in india disc most of the times most of the times in temporal mandibular joint the bone is not at fault there may be problems with the bone there may be flattening of the condyle condyle is a bone involved in tnj there may be flattening of your bones there may be some erosions here and there but precisely speaking that does not cause much problem what actually causes problems is the disc so te- to put things into perspective the soft tissue component is more uh, tr- troubling than the hard tissue of the joint to have a look at the soft tissue component of your joint you need to have an mri scan with you so get an mri done the mri will tell you about the disc quality and the disc position at that point of time i am not here to say that all the mri joints are uh, very accurate but yes they do the job they give you an overall idea of what's happening inside the joint so i get an mri joint done now temporal mandibular joint most of the times even with an internal derangement can lead to headaches it can lead to a lot of muscular spasms happening in the face so this happens because there is something gone wrong in your joint 
when something is wrong in the joint it puts the muscles as i said uh, five minutes back that there is a particular set of muscles which is involved in opening your joint and there is another set of muscles involved in closing your joint the moment something goes wrong in the joint it puts these muscles under stress when the muscles are under stress they tend to go under fatigue and spasms when this happens the patient typically complains of fatigue in uh, in the face a patient may feel and say that uh, when i am eating a chapati after eating one chapati i feel tired i don't feel like going to the next chapati even if because if, even if i am hungry so this is precisely a key point in understanding that yes the facial muscles uh, are getting fatigued and this is also a point which should not be uh, misdiagnosed so yes all all these things are taken care of by conservative management of tmj having said that most 80% of tmj disorders can be dealt conservatively but the rest 20% of the disorders which are to be dealt surgically there are different types of options that are available and this the the form of surgery needed for this particular patient will completely depend at which stage of tmj disorders is he coming so there is a full classification of these disorders i will not go in detail of those classifications but having said that the we will surely discuss the form of treatment available for with us in india we have arthrosynthesis available for us arthrosynthesis is basically just uh, flushing the joint so theoretically when there is something gone wrong in your joint there is a lot of inflammatory uh, mediators present inside the joint which lead to pain a joint is an airtight capsule you can consider it as an airtight capsule nothing comes inside the joint nothing goes outside the joint so when something went wrong for example you had an event you ate something hard it caused trauma in your joint these inflammatory mediators have already come inside and now they need to be flushed out so when you flush the joint it does two two major purposes one it will flush out all the inflammatory mediators second it will also uh, reboot your joint to secrete more of the synovial fluid synovial fluid is the lubricant in layman terms which helps your joint to function well so yes arthrosynthesis is one of the procedure it is a day care procedure can be done at any clinical setup or in an hospital uh, it's a blind procedure although you cannot see anything inside the joint so and yes it it i would i personally don't prefer arthrosynthesis but then when a patient comes to you with an immediate acute tmj disorder is in a lot of pain to relieve you can surely perform an arthrosynthesis and the patient will have relief but then he will bounce back if uh, at all uh, there is something more to just the damage second form of treatment surgical point of view from the surgical point of view the second form of treatment available with us is tmj arthroscopy tmj arthroscopy is relatively new in uh, india there are very few surgeons performing tmj arthroscopy uh, in the tmj arthroscopy procedure the surgeon will put a camera inside your joint from one from one port and from the other port he will put an instrument inside your joint and will try to reposition so if at all your disc is displaced it has been displaced for a long period of time now see the displacement does not necessarily happens only in one direction it may happen in multiple directions the disc may be displaced forwards and outwards forwards and inwards backwards a lot of direct directions this can happen when this happens you need to reposition the disc if you reposition the disc there are better chances of remodeling and obviously it gives relief to the patient arthroscopy also happens under constant rl irrigation so arthroscopy not only does this repositioning but also does arthrosynthesis so there is no arthroscopy without an arthrosynthesis procedure so yes it does two, both the jobs flushing out the inflammatory mediators as well as repositioning the disc arthroscopy can also anchor the disc so when we perform a level 3 arthroscopy we can also uh, pass a stitch through the disc and anchor it in position this is something which is uh, very revolutionary in the field of tmj disorders arthroscopy uh, because in the earlier days when a patient with tmj disorders used to come to us uh, obviously for internal rearrangement normally it used to be arthrosynthesis conservative treatment arthrosynthesis or directly an open joint surgery there was nothing to bridge the gap in between with the availability of arthros arthroscopy uh, that bridges bridges the gap you don't most of uh, in my practice are uh, 
almost 70% of the patients after that we have developed the skill of arthroscopy uh, are managed with an arthroscopy procedure. So the number of open joints we perform these days have gone down significantly. Coming to a uh, problem which is uh, that is uh, disc perforation because if a disc displacement goes unnoticed or misdiagnosed or diagnosed and the patient takes time to take a decision what will happen is that this disc may get folded or it may tear. If there is a meniscus tear, uh, if the tear is small, yes, you can still perform uh, arthroscopy and wait and keep your fingers crossed for the joint to remodel or else you can go in and perform an open joint surgery. Normally we replace the disc, uh, this is my personal opinion, a discectomy works really well and we reposition it. Uh, sorry, replace it with uh, fat grafts or any other, many other grafts available. We do that and uh, yes, the patient is put on physiotherapy and they function well. If the patient still, if the patient having a meniscus tear and still avoids the problem or still prolongs the treatment, then yes, there are a lot of times where it goes, the, the arthritis of the joint goes really uh, ahead and uh, it may lead to completely flattened bones, uh, uh, shattered disc and everything. Uh, in such kind of patients, we perform total joint replacements. Now having said of total joint replacements, TMJ disorders does not only mean internal rearrangement. There are a lot of other TMJ issues that ask for a total joint replacement. For example, tumors, tumors in the joint, uh, tumors of the bones. Uh, TMJ, chondroma, osteochondromas, uh, there are different kind of diagnosis where also it warrants for a total joint replacement, yes. So at SL Nareja Hospital, we have an entire unit committed for total joint, temporomandibular joint replacements and uh, it is relatively new but yes, we are doing it and uh, yes, it works well. However, uh, it is an end stage treatment when the temporomandibular joint disorders reach an end stage, yes, we have to go along with TMJ joint replacements. There are other problems such as TMJ hyperplasia, whether with the size of the condyle is more or less, it's called hypoplasia or hyperplasia. In such uh, TMJ disorders, it leads to asymmetry in the face. When this asymmetry happens, not every time the asymmetry is only from the jaw end or the chin end, because nowadays people going for genioplasties and etc. Uh, sometimes it may also arise from the joint. So what does an hyperplasia mean? That the joint of the patient is typically overgrown. So we can assess that by different PET scans and all that. And once we assess that, we can go in and we can treat the problem. Once you treat the hyperplasia or the hyperplasia, the facial asymmetry also gets corrected to a particular extent. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. I would uh, take this opportunity to like to thank SN Raheja Hospital and the marketing team to allow me to have this session. Uh, I don't know how much I have been able to clear a few doubts in this field but uh, I would come along uh, with these Facebook sessions regularly and would discuss few particular problems in depth along with models and the treatment modalities available for uh, treating temporomandibular joint disorders. Uh, Lastly, I would like to end saying that TMJ disorders is more prevalent uh, than we know. The only thing is that there is less awareness among gen amongst the general population, uh, not only the general population, also a few doctors. Uh, so I would like to take this opportunity and uh, raise awareness regarding the problem. Thank you uh, for being patient and uh, thanks a lot, Raisa. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.